Hello everybody and welcome back to Dr. Ghost Games and today we're going to be taking a look at the USS Iowa. Yes, this ship is easily one of my favorite battleships in the game. It's not my favorite, but I uh, it used to be my favorite um, until Wargaming screwed it up. Um, but with all that being said, let's take a look at the ship and my god is she a beauty. Look how beautiful that ship is. Uh, keep in mind, it's a Tier 7 Tech Tree Battleship, if I didn't say that already, for the United States Navy. And yeah, it's an excellent ship. Now let's take a look at the upgrades and loadout. We have Air Groups Mod 1, or AA Guns Mod 2, or whatever. Uh, propulsion Mod 2, and if we were to choose, we would put that on, of course. And uh, Artillery Plotting Room, uh, I don't put that on no more, because it seems there might be a bug with the RD Plotting Room, so I'm not going to touch that. But if I had to choose between any upgrades, it would be these three right here. So yeah, keep that in mind. Now let's go take a look at the, uh, the Commander. We have William Sims here. I'm um, looking fine and dandy. We have Andrew Cunningham and Otto Ciliax as inspirations. We have Built to Last. We have All Out Anti-Air. We have Gyrating Jill Brits, Marksmanship. Reaching Out XXL. And Will to Rebuild. We are Legendary Rank 2 and we are Rank 16 with William Sims. Let's take a look at the ship and the stats and all that stuff. The high explosive shells, it's not the best, um, but if you do get people that are going bow on or they're angling against you, yeah, it, it can be pretty effective. We have, uh, the, of course, these big 16-inch Iowa 50 caliber shells that do pen and they do very good amounts of damage. They're very nice indeed. We have damage con, of course. We have three standard repair parties. We have some spotters to get the extra dispersion. Then we have the early adopter flag as well. And then for our camo, we have the stars and stripes, and look how nice that looks. It does indeed. Um, I'll take it off for you guys right here, actually, so you guys can see what it looks like without it. And it looks pretty uh, pretty clean, the Iowa does. It's a very nice looking ship. And that's one thing I really like about these uh, American battleships, especially the Iowa class, the South Dakota classes, all those stuff. Um, let's take a look at the stats. We have 72,520 hit points. We have 429 millimeters of armor. That's a lot of armor. Um... Torpedo reduction, 22%, not good. We have, of course, the 9 16-inch 50 caliber um, uh, big old 16-inch guns on here, and they reload every 30 seconds. AA defense, it's probably some of the best AA in the game, if not the best. The Iowa has extremely good AA, and if you put an AA build on, it could be even better. So uh, look out for that. Maneuverability, we have, uh, it's not great, it's an Iowa. Maneuverability is really, really bad. Concealment. It's a battleship, but let's go back to maneuver maneuverability. The maneuverability, like I said, it's it's really, really bad. So just don't really depend on that too much. And concealment, of course, it's a battleship. We're not going to be worrying that, about that too much. Now, the armor, as you guys can see, it has a 32-millimeter bow um, and maybe a stern. I don't know. I think the stern's a little bit more weaker. But the bow, you can ricochet 16s or, or lower. So the only thing that can overmatch in Iowa is the Yamato. So look, look out for that. But yeah, that's why the Iowa is so famous for just going bow into everybody because it bounces everything that gets that get that hits there in the bow. So look forward to that in the video and all that stuff. And the the vital ship part and armor. There you guys go. It has a big citadel. And I'll see you guys over in the gameplay. Enjoy. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna be on two brothers, and I said it. I said we're gonna be on two brothers. Now, keep in mind we're not gonna go down the middle um, at all until the very end. It's gonna be a fun middle push, and it's actually going to work. Um, but right now we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna we're gonna let people run out and uh, get get ultimately screwed over. They're gonna there's gonna be some people coming out broadside and all that stuff, and you guys are gonna see that all in the gameplay. Now the Iowa, as you all know, the Iowa, um, as some of you know, not all of you guys know, but some of you guys that play the Iowa, you notice that dispersion, the dispersion for the Iowa, was screwed up drastic, drastically. And um, the reason why I took off the artillery plotting room is because it seems that the artillery plotting room just decreases the dispersion instead of actually makes it better. So that's why I took that off. And I seem to get better results without the uh, artillery plotting room. I'll put that back on um, once the RD plotting room maybe gets fixed or whatever. But there is definitely something wrong with the Iowa. The Iowa was never this, ac it was never this inaccurate before. So now take a look at that. There's some decent dispersion on the Massachusetts. And let's see what we get out of that. And uh, yeah, we managed to get one Citadel, giving us 21,000 damage right off the bat. First salvo, a Citadel. That's what I'm talking about. Now we have a uh, we have an Atlanta and all that stuff, and they're just they're all sitting there like they usually do, hanging out, taking shots at our team, and there's just not much we can do about it except just take it and try to return in the you know return it in the favor um, of our team here. And we're gonna see if we can get some shots in at the enemy. Now we just did like I said, we just Citadel the crap out of that guy. 
And there's going to be an Atlanta and a couple cruisers behind that one island where everybody likes to camp behind. Um, notice that there's also two carriers. We uh, Both teams have a Shikaku on each team. And uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. Now, um, the Massachusetts got touched also by my friend. And it's it's he's not too long for this world. Now we're getting HE spanned, of course. So uh, we're going to start backing up and uh, hopefully get out of the range of that, that light cruiser that's HE spamming us. Now, notice that the Massachusetts still is sailing away. And he's not really, he should be sitting at his spawn near there. But he's trying to push out, and he unfortunately didn't do it very well. He got Citadel right off the bat. He should just be running away completely. And uh, we're going to keep taking shots at him, hoping to finish him. And uh, unfortunately, um, he's just going to keep angling, and we're not going to get a whole lot of damage on him. Notice that we're still burning, and we're going to keep on burning because, you know, HE spammers are HE spammers, and they can get whatever the hell they want done. All they got to do is aim at you, set fires, boom, they get damaged. It's so simple for them. Um... But for me, I actually got to take the time. I got to lead my shots. I got to actually hit people where I need them hit. And then I need to get lucky if I get a Citadel or not. Or even a big amount of damage. Um, with HE, everything, you don't even need to depend on that. You just need to depend all on luck. And, you know, cruisers get all the luck they need usually. So, um, unfortunately, we fire off a salvo, a full salvo off at that cruiser. And we just get nothing for it. Which is pretty regular. Um, the troll shots are pretty inev inevitable. So yeah, nothing you can do about that really. Um, but yeah, we're just going to keep reversing. There's not really much to talk about here. Except just really tell we fire a shot off. Um, just talk about that. Now I hope you guys did enjoy the, the host show video I had yesterday. I put a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of thought and time into that. And a lot of planning actually. I planned a couple days prior to get a... Um, you know, to get a good match in it for you guys, and I thought the host should be the first one because I already have a Langley video in the past. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna be uh, noticed that the 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 Shokaku is coming up behind us, and he's just yep, he's just doing what he's doing, and he's having a good time playing his new carrier that he got. And uh, yeah, he paid twenty three million. Keep in mind, the new carriers are extremely expensive. Um, oh, what the tier three is like two hundred forty thousand. The tier five is about six point four million. And the tier 7 is about 23 million. So you're paying about double or triple almost for what a usual ship would be for some of these these carriers. They're very expensive. So look like, look forward to that. I mean, people got to spend a lot of credits and money to get these carriers right now. Um, and right now the matchmaking is screwed up too for carriers. Um, I don't know if it's just for tier 3s, but from what I see, it takes about 3 minutes to get to a match in my Hosho or my uh, Langley. So... Um, it's very hard to rank up because I gotta wait for so long just to get into a freaking match, and it's, I can tell it's intentional too. The queue is intentional. I always get into a match around the same so, uh, around the same time, three minutes and thirty seconds. So I think Wargaming put an intentional queue in there for everybody who wants to play carriers. Um, notice we're trying to fire over the island at that Atlanta because he's just causing problems for all of us, me mainly, but he's also causing problems for everybody else. And yeah, so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna. We're going to push left now. We see an opportunity, and we're going to take it. And you guys could think what we're going to do. But uh, me and my friend are thinking, hmm, how about we rush down the middle? It sounds stupid, right? But at this point in the game, we're all in the heat of battle. We're all focused on the flanks and not the middle. And we're actually going to get a really, really good center push um, into the middle. And it's going to be very interesting. Um... You guys are really going to enjoy it, I think. But notice we're at 31,000 damage. We have been doing a whole lot. But we managed to keep the Massachusetts from pushing up, which is great for us. Um, notice the enemy is trying to get uh, on the other side of the map to try to get over to maybe get some flanks on us. And it's just not going to happen. And look, at we just pound that Cleveland. We pound that Cleveland. There's nothing he could have done there. We just ruined him. Didn't even get a Citadel. Keep in mind, we didn't even get a freaking Citadel, but we deleted him. Beautiful indeed. We're just gonna keep on sailing though, and we're gonna now we're gonna uh, we're gonna try to lead our shots, or we're trying to see where he's going, but it's a little too late. We're not even gonna worry about it, um, and we're just gonna keep on sailing and uh, try to get into the into the the mouth of the center, and we're gonna push right into their cap. And there's gonna be a little surprise waiting at the mouth of the cap too. I think you guys are gonna look forward to that. It's gonna be pretty funny, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be nice. Um, we're at 53,000 damage. We went from 30 to 50 from that hit on that Cleveland. And I noticed that both sides, it's pretty much a stalemate. Each side is holding very well. 
and we're not really doing much. So we, we're taking this opportunity to break up their their left flank, um, to maybe even disrupt it a lot. And we do manage to fully disrupt it from this middle push. Keep that in mind. This middle push will work, um, and it will it will be devastating for the enemy. They are not expecting it now. They had planes spotting us the whole time. All the enemy had to do was you know begin to to angle and but i think that it's too late i think they're they're getting focused down by too many people and uh they're forced to just suck it up and just take the damage and they just really couldn't do much about the center push an iowa and a massachusetts pushing down a center is not particularly um the easiest thing to counter um if you have a dd but there's no dds as you guys notice so not much they could do really in this situation so we're gonna keep pushing right through the center and uh see the beautiful Iowa moving on through um, the uh, my friend is behind me one of my clan mates um, in the Massachusetts and we're just gonna keep on pushing chugging along and watch who's gonna pop up here right near the cap right near the capture sign just watch look who's gonna pop up need notice for plane spotted again I wonder whose planes those are I wonder who's oh we get a Looks like we're going to get a shot here on the Gnaiza now, but we hold it, and look who it is. It's the Shokaku. Yep, he's sitting here, and, uh, yeah, we just touch him, and uh, we take about a quarter or more of his health, and my friend behind me is also going to get some shots in on the Shokaku. I don't know why this carrier thought pushing into the cap next to the mouth of the spawn was a good idea. But, hey, we're about to kill a carrier right here and right now. It's, like, it's pretty funny. Um, this Shokaku was just there waiting for us, and uh, he misses his torpedoes. Notice the Iowa AA is going off, along with the Massachusetts AA. We're shooting down planes, we're shooting down everything, we're getting secondary hits, and watch what's about to happen to this Shokaku. My friend is going to blow him up. Now we fire. Unfortunately, we bounce a bunch, but watch what our friend does. Shots go in, and boom! He gets a devastating strike on the Shokaku, killing him right away. Goodbye, buddy. Well, he doesn't get a dev strike. He's about a couple thousand off of a dev, a dev strike, but we pretty much uh, secured this, and we're going to push right into the cap, and we're going to focus on the guy, uh, the mainly the Iowa off to our right side. And uh, there's also an, uh, there's also a uh, not a mass. There's a Colorado, or not a, a Colorado, a Gneisenau out there, and he's going broadside. So we're going to take a shot at range. Maybe we can even get a Citadel because he's very far out. Turtleback isn't really effective at range. And uh, unfortunately, the shots just troll us completely there. Now, notice what this Iowa is doing. He's going flat broadside to us. Notice we're turning into angle. He didn't even try to back up an angle. He's just sitting there broadside for us. So here we go. We're going to get the rear turret of justice off. And we're going to blow him up. Bullseye. Boom. There's one citadel with the rear turret of justice. And we're going to get the front guns loaded. And another citadel. And, uh, yeah, he's just... He just cannot do anything about an Iowa and a Mass pushing in. And notice we're at 128,000 damage. And, uh, yeah, the match is coming to a quick end. But uh, it's not over yet. We still have to deal with these these three ships that are remaining. We do manage to take one of them out. And this Iowa is just not long for this world. He's now angling, but he's lost almost 75% of his health. He's just not long for this world at all. So we're going to achieve and get some shots into his superstructure. I'm telling my friend to also aim in the superstructure to get some hits in there, even knock out his guns, which we do there. We knock out, I think, both of his guns, actually, in one hit. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah, we're at 38,000 damage, and we're still pushing around this Iowa. We're trying to angle best so we don't over-angle and get punched. We still can get deleted if we're not careful. So, yeah, this is a very tricky spot to be in for some people. But, luckily, I'm a good player, and I know what I'm doing, and I know how to avoid, um, not avoid, but angle my armor, and there we go. My friend secures the kill for the Iowa, and now we have a Gnaise now left. We could have got um, 200,000 damage this game if we would have gotten a little bit more damage. Keep that in mind. Um, this could have been a really, really, really good game, but it's still a really, really good game. Um, it's still a really fun game. And just knowing when to push up the middle, you can really you can really catch some teams off guard. And we did there. The Shokaku wasn't even expecting anybody to come up the middle. The Iowa was waiting. He didn't really have a choice. He thought I was going to roll out broadside. I knew he was there. We had reconnaissance. We had planes. We had people spotting him. No, they just they couldn't do nothing there. His, his mistake was he was broadside. If he wasn't broadside, that situation could have turned out differently. Um, he could have maybe even rammed us. He could have done any of that um, and just completely disrupted it. But it doesn't matter. Um, it really probably wouldn't even matter anyway. The teammates on the, the north side and um, stuff would come up. 
and they would come up behind him and, you know, kill him. So not much he could have done there, but uh, yeah, he didn't really play very well. Um, but yeah, we're at 153,000. We're still going to get a little bit more off this Gunaiza now. We're just chasing down this Gunaiza now. This Gunaiza now knows it's over. There's nothing he can do. He's just got to just wait for the inevitable loss he's going to uh, succumb to here in a little bit. And we're firing off a full salvo of eight of uh, not eighty inch, sixteen inch, fifty caliber Iowa shells. And look at those! Oh yeah, we get a big hit on the Ganaza now, bringing our damage up to one hundred and seventy thousand damage. And uh, unfortunately, our team looks like they're about to cap the base. It's still good, but we could have got a little bit more damage. But it's all right. It's all good. And. Uh, we're about to get the win here. We're just—I think we're going to be able to get one more salvo off. Oh, wait, someone reset the base. Someone got out of it. But uh, it looks like we're going to be able to get maybe one or two, maybe three more salvos off at the Skanaisa now. And uh, there again, pretty decent dispersion. And uh, the dispersion is landing right into his center. And uh, we get really not much there, unfortunately. And uh, it looks like the carrier is going to get two torpits. And uh, yeah, he's just not long for this world. He really isn't. And yeah, it's been a really fun match, though. I hope you guys did enjoy. Um, don't forget to punch the like button, subscribe, um, comment down below what you guys want to see. Give me thought. Give me your thoughts. Give me any input, anything you guys want. Feel free to put it in the comments. I do get back to everybody as long as all the comments are clean. And there goes the Ganaisa now, giving us the win. That center push was beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been really excited to post this one for you. And, uh, we get a new uh, milestone, of course, the campaign. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to punch the like button, subscribe, comment down below, all that stuff. And uh, let's take a look at the battle results. 173,000 damage, a whole bunch of credits earned, um, a whole bunch of planes shot down, citadels, all the stuff in one battle. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys on the next one tomorrow. Peace out, stay healthy.